What is up guys, Jimmy Mikkel here of Social Vignerons. Welcome back to another wine video. This is episode 33 of the Tasting with Julian series, the series where we together taste and learn about the world of wine. We explore the different facets of the world of wine. Wow, and I can't believe I'm actually doing this today. I've been sitting on these bottles for about a year waiting for the right moment to run this tasting and to do this video. This is the day I find out whether screw caps or natural corks are better to age your wine. So what have we got here? I've got six bottles of the same wine, or I mean the same producer. Those are white wines made by Chateau Lalouvière. Those are white wines made from Sauvignon Blanc, barrel fermented Sauvignon Blanc in the Bordeaux area, south of the Bordeaux area, in the Pessac Léonien, the Grave uh, area, some of the best white wines from the Bordeaux area and from a very famous and great, great, great producer uh, of uh, Pessac Léonien, Chateau Lalouvière. These guys have been kind enough, generous, utterly generous enough uh, with me to supply me the, with these bottles. So what have we got here? We've got three wines from the 2010 vintage and three wines from the 2007 uh, vintage. So we've got wines that are about nine years old on this side and 12 years old on this side. They have been sellered at the winery, but what is specific, what is fantastic about these wines, two of these wines at this end have been bottled and uh, under cork, while one of them has been bottled and the screw cap and same here so why two bottles and the cork well as we know the variability cork is a natural product which is a pro which is a great thing about it because it's more ecologically sound it's a more ecological resource because it's a natural product versus metal and aluminium on this side but the downside of it is that it's a natural natural product it's not consistent it doesn't seal the wines all the wines the same way the wine eats through the cork as well, so eventually the cork may start being destroyed and then it's hard to pull out, it takes longer to pull out, so there are pros and cons. But at the end of the day, what we want is the best for our wines. At the end of the day, what we want is to know what is best for age-worthy wines, the wines that we are going to sell, the wines that we invest on, what is best for, for our wines at the end of the day. So there's been an eternal debate on the from the ones that love corks and the ones that hate it. In Australia and New Zealand, they love the screw cap and I lived in Australia and I lived in New Zealand for over six years. So I know where these guys stand. They hate natural cork. Uh, they love the screw cap. I'm French, I grew up in France, and so I can see and I can understand why the French and many in Europe love the sound, they are emotional about the sound of the cork being pulled out. I have no preconceived ideas about what I prefer. Honestly, I do prefer what's best for the wines, especially when it comes to aging. For younger wines, well, fruity aromatic white wine screw cap is definitely better for me and uh, I, I took that from New Zealand I suppose uh, from the Sauvignon Blancs for red wines uh, it all comes down to aging uh, I do like the practicality of screw caps but at the end of the day as I was saying it's all about whether they age better under screw cap or not so let's find out and have a taste at all of these wines so six wines it's going to be a little long to get through but you know i'm brave enough uh, test number one opening the bottles of wine which one is best okay let's start with the screw cap done three seconds let's try the cork and i might speed up a little bit here so it's not too too boring okay let's go okay time wise screw cap definitely wins it's taking me about a minute and 10 seconds uh, to pull the cork out uh, also i came across one of the problems with corks um, this cork broke as I was pulling it. I was pulling it out, so really had to make sure I had the, the screw really uh, all the way through until the end to pull this cork out. Uh, this is 
the 2010 vintage so you can imagine with another five or ten years that may have been a problem uh, for breaking this cork it's always a little bit tricky to uh, get the cork out and I've had this problem before okay allow me one second I need to open that other bottle that is under cork This is a great great sound. Anyways, uh, so oh, now we've got all these three bottles open. Uh, let's try these little babies and see what they've got to say. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to start pouring uh, the screw cap here on this side here. And the two wines under cork on here and on here. Can you see the color all right here? Wow, so I'm not sure you can actually see the color of these wines uh, very well, um, but I can certainly see them. And um, what have we got? In terms of the color, the wine and the screw cap is definitely brighter and it still has a little bit of green hues uh, into it. It certainly looks a lot brighter while the two under uh, cork one is definitely quite golden and you can see that it's evolved over time this one is less golden it's got uh, less uh, denser brown hues into it so definitely just for looking from looking at the color you can see that these two wines under cork must have some sort of variability just from looking at it let's dig into those two under cork first you have to know that these wines made in the Grave and the Pesac Leonian area, especially the ones that are barrel fermented, are some of the most age worthy white wines from Bordeaux but from all around the world as well. I've had, I was lucky enough to work for, the, from, for these guys at André Lurton and I was lucky enough to experience wines from the 1970s, the 1980s and even uh, up to the 1950s white wines and some are aged beautifully beautifully so those wines are some of the most age worthy it's not very well known outside of Bordeaux or outside of France but some of these uh, Sauvignon Blancs are the most age worthy the most fascinating wines white wines to age in the whole world <sighs> mm. So this first wine under cork is still shiny and it's still super super vibrant. I'm getting a lot of the broom and this uh, typical uh, passion fruit uh, character that you get from the Sauvignon Blanc. It's also slightly buttery, it's a little bit uh, oaky, a little bit of vanilla. It's got some passion fruit, it's got some pineapple, it's tropical but it's also quite herbal with the typical slightly uh, you know cappy uh, flavor and aroma of the Sauvignon Blanc it's uh, very elegant it's complex but it's still very very fresh and vibrant great great complexity that has developed in there but the freshness is still there even in this wine under cork let's try the other wine under cork wow so straight away even from the aroma so I was saying that this wine is a lot more golden Smelling it, it's got a lot more waxy and honey characters to it. It still has a bit of the pineapple, but it's more on the dried pineapple. There's a lot more tropical fruits and dried fruits in there instead of the vegetal grassy uh, character that is typical of the Sauvignon Blanc. So this wine has obviously changed uh, quite dramatically. It's evolved uh, quite a lot going on the waxy, honey, nutty and tropical side of things already after nine years let's see what it tastes like mm. Mm. it does taste beautiful as well but this is more definitely we're going more on the more botrytis kind of sauterne or sweet dessert a style in terms of flavor it's a lot more tropical it's a lot more opulent 
and rich and uh, less definitely less of, of the freshness so I mean you would taste these wines blind these two wines on the cork you wouldn't believe uh, they are actually the exact same wine same winery same vintage they are absolutely both absolutely uh, delicious uh, but this one seems like it's perhaps yeah maybe nine years old but it could be even younger this could be only four or five years old while this feels definitely it's 10 years uh, maybe 15 or more it's not tired though it's still excellent excellent but the bottle variation here is absolutely uh, striking absolutely immense so there's a saying in the world of wine no two bottles are the same even especially and that's especially true obviously in the natural cork even same winery same vintage the bottle variation can be absolutely immense and we do have an outstanding demonstration here let's move on to the one and the screw cap wow this smells so fresh and vibrant i can still smell the grassiness of the Sauvignon Blanc it's floral you are getting some lily I'm getting a lot of honeysuckle as well the broom and the cat pee is there it's so bright and shiny and vibrant wow this is amazing I can't believe this is a 10 year old Sauvignon Blanc wow it's got the subtle uh, grassy uh, characters of Sauvignon Blanc as well as the slightly delicate acacia honey surrounding it this is fantastic to smell at mm. wow 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 my mind is blown the opulence on the palate the body seems to be a lot rounder the acidity has retained all this freshness the crispiness the outstanding vivacity the vibrancy the liveliness this is such a wine that is so lively i mean it seems to have rounded up and smoothened uh, from the 10 years of aging it's developed the complexity and the depth that is you know com only comes from aged wine but it's retained all the freshness so it feels complete it feels whole it feels whole I mean, hmm. wow, my mind is blown at how good this wine is. Those two are superb, superb, superb expression. And let me get back to them for a second. Wow, all three are, are superb. And in a way, I guess, Dating them all side by side, you can sense why, how this is the same wine, but the expressions are just all over the place. I do have to admit that I love the freshness and you can still sense even the oak in the barrels, the freshness of the oak in this wine. Uh, one of the, the, the first, the least aged and the least developed uh, wine of the, the ones under cork is has a freshness but it's got the evolution so it's probably the most balanced and complex of them all this one is actually getting a little bit tired so massive massive variability but the most impressive for me for that vintage is certainly the one under screw cap i'm amazed at how fresh and vibrant this one still is it has developed the complexity as well it's not like it feels like it's a young wine that doesn't have depths uh, in and lengths to the tasting experience it has it but it's also retained the freshness and the sensation that you're actually tasting the grapes and the terroir and the barrels that it was made from so for me on this 2007 vintage it's three points more for the one and the screw cap without hesitation even though the other two are absolutely superb as well let's move on to the 2010 vintage or 2007 vintage I should say and see whether we've got the same result or not I'll be back in a sec okay so moving on to 2007 vintage and let's start pouring the wines on the cork okay so we've got a golden color here slightly more evolved and developed than the 2010 vintage and if I look at the color of these two wow again again one of them has uh, developed a much deeper much more golden amber uh, hue to it 
than the other one, so a bit of a variability here. Ah, wow. Let's see what the score crew one has to say. Wow, again, I don't know whether you can see it, but difference in color is quite striking. This is still a little green. It's still so vibrant to look at where these two seem, you know, much, much more evolved. They're golden, they're shiny, but golden. Let's dig into them further. Okay, let's, uh, let's start with the cork ones. Wow, so the first one in the cork has definitely developed quite a lot. It's now become really, really nutty. There's a lot of walnut character. The length though is absolutely immense. So this is really a wine that has developed. It's not dead, it's still very, very vibrant, but it's all really, really nutty now. It feels a bit like, almost like an amaretto liqueur loads and loads of nut like a nut uh, liquor i have to say that this bottle had a cork that was that broke as well and that is a little bit a little bit tired uh, you can see that it's starting to disintegrate a little bit here and uh, i suspect this wine has evolved quite a bit because of this cork that has moved let's try the other wine and the cork wow so this one is a lot more vibrant the fruit characters are much more lively. 12 years old, and this is exactly what I was saying about these wines. 12 years old, Sauvignon Blanc, under cork, and they're still bright and shiny, and the depth and complexity is just immense. So if you weren't aware of the white wines from Sauvignon Blanc from the Southern Ball area, some of the best uh, white wines, my, one of my favorite wine styles of them all, and they are age-worthy wines. They are wines worth investing on and cellaring for 10, 15, 20 years and more and you are just amazed at how far those wines can go. Some of these wines in great vintages like 2007 and like 2010 can age for 30, 35, 40 years even under cork and I can't even imagine under screw cap. These wines under screw cap it looks like they could age for 100 years under screw cap. I wouldn't be surprised all that much. Wow. So tasting the one and the screw cap, the color has evolved a little bit more. So you can see that the wines are moving, they are evolving. Even on the nose, it's not quite as vibrant and fresh as the 2010 vintage. Three years more, the wine has evolved. So it's not like screw cap freezes the wine completely. It still moves and you can sense that it has moved for 12 years in here. It has evolved, but not a whole lot. It's still fresh and vibrant to smell it, at least. Mm. Wow. Yeah, again, the vibrancy and the crispness, the expression of the primary fruit character of Sauvignon Blanc, excuse me, on, the, on this wine and the screw cap is just stunning. 12 years in a bottle of wine, and you can sense, still sense the freshness of the grapes and the palate is also super, super lively. So it's not only about the aromatics that have retained their freshness, but it's also about the liveliness on the palate. The way the wine and the acidity interacts with your palate and the fresh, fresh, freshness and the fragrance of the flavor also participates in a wine that feels so vibrant. It feels sunny, it feels filled with all the goodness from the terroir and from the sun it's a hundred percent alive in there well here it's more like wines that have matured they've acquired with age more maturity so they are perhaps a little bit more interesting in a way you know like a bit of a person that evolves that in his mid 40s or something they become a bit more interesting maybe they're a little bit less appealing but they have a lot more to say in a way that said those wines under screw cap feel like they are in their late 20s and they've learned a whole a whole lot in the meantime they still have the freshness and the appeal of young wines but they also have a lot and a lot to say and they are also really really fascinating to taste so 
I might be a little bit biased, I'm not sure, but I'm just utterly impressed by those wines on the screw cap and I'm impressed at how pure the fruity and the floral expression still is after 10 or 12 years in their bottle. Uh, and I believe this is, I mean, if you add the variability that we found and we definitely seen like it's major between the two bottles that were and the cork, uh, if you factor this in, in the fact that if you buy one of these one, you are going to get a completely of really, really different wines and you take the risk of having a corked wine as well. Um, the wines and the screw cap for me, it's just a, a clear, clear, clear victory. There's no arguing here. I wish you were here to experience this with me for yourself. I hope you get a chance someday. This is just, just absolutely mind blowing how good all of these wines are. But the ones and the screw cap are just for me, they're, they're blow, blow, blowing my mind. I think it's the first time that I taste a 12 year old uh, barrel fermented wine and the screw cap and they're just absolutely, absolutely superb. Um, my mind is uh, racing right now. This is uh, mind blowing. Okay, I'll, th I'll think about a conclusion and I'll get back to you in a second. Wow, so I have been thinking for five minutes about what, how to conclude this video and uh, trying to make up my mind and what I'm thinking. I think I can summarize it with these two corks. I hope you can see them well enough. Those two are both from 2010 vintage, but they are so, so different. Uh, one of them has started to crumble. The other one looks perfect. Uh, the wine has only gone through like one or two millimeters. And I think this summarizes this tasting and my experience uh, with this wine. The aging and the cork is fantastic because the wines do evolve and they acquire this complexity and flavors and aromas that you don't find and experience very often in wines. We do experience a lot of uh, grassy passion fruit characters for any young Sauvignon Blanc that you buy anywhere around the world. Aged wines like these barrel fermented Sauvignon Blancs aged for 10 years developed some nutty and waxy characters. The depths and complexity and length on the palate that is really really rare that not many people experience and for this I absolutely love the aging and the cork but but, but tasting the swines and the screw caps, I think, yeah, it would take probably 20 or 25 or 30 years for those to acquire it, acquire this complexity, but they would also feature the freshness of the fruit and the terroir and the grapes that they were made from. So it's really hard to choose which ones, you know, which way you prefer, but I'm just amazed at how consistent the screw cap is and how well those wines have aged on the screw cap. So I think I have to give the clear victory to the screw caps. I was blown away by those wines. But you know, the ones on the cork, they stand proud. Uh, I guess it's more for people that are really into developed wines and that want uh, developed nutty, waxy flavors that love this type of aromas and they want it 10 years after the vintage or you know they want to buy a 10 year old wine and they want this evolved characteristics into their wine and they don't quite mind that there is a bottle variation. I guess bottle variation makes things a bit more interesting as well because you never exactly know what you're gonna get and it's always gonna get a little bit different in every wine in your case it's always gonna be a bit of a surprise and I guess that's a bit exciting but the downside is that some bottles are a lot more evolved and a bit tired and some are still fresh and vibrant and exciting so you know it's a matter really a matter of taste but I think from now on uh, at least for this type of Sauvignon Blanc, barrel fermented Sauvignon Blancs and I'm sure this works for pretty much any at least white wines, the wrestlings and the Chardonnays I'm sure we would get the same type of result from now on I am absolutely going to sustain and support the corkscrews man if you're a winery and you're making this type of white wines 
go for screw cap at least half of your production i know the bottling lines are a bit different i know those can be a little bit expensive as well at least to invest on but if you're making age-worthy wines do invest into screw caps and if you are a consumer and you don't want to consider screw cap wines well change your mind change your mind uh, visit a producer and ask them to pull out an old bottle of uh, wine bottled under screw cap you will see that those wines are just amazing 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 to taste even 10 years 15 years they do evolve they do age anyway i don't know uh, i'm absolutely convinced in um well you know i mean you haven't tasted this wine so you just have to believe me but uh man 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 screw cap screw cap all the way at least for white wines i, I i'm dying to try those on aged red wines now but um man now i know why the kiwis and the aussies are all about the screw caps i'm i don't know why why would you want to cork except for all the good reasons that i've given before anyways i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope this wasn't too boring and me ranting and talking by myself in front of the camera but uh, yeah this was a fascinating experience for me i hope it was i'm happy i shared it with you and uh, I'll see you around and I'll see you soon in the world of wine. Cheers. Salute.